Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Ryan Gertzma. And I'm Robin Basselin. Spotlight uses a special English method of broadcasting. It is easier for people to understand no matter where in the world they live. Thirty-three men lived through a terrible crisis. These men were miners at the San Jose mine near Copiapó, Chile. Together, these men worked deep under the ground. Every day, they dug valuable copper and gold out of the ground. But on August 5th, 2010, the ground above these miners collapsed. Large rocks fell and filled the paths back to the surface. These 33 miners were trapped. And they remained trapped under the ground for 69 days. You may have heard another Spotlight program about the San Jose mine crisis. This program described how the men lived under the ground. And it told the story of their amazing rescue. However, the miner's story did not end with their rescue. For all of them, life continues after the crisis. And for many, life after the crisis is very different than before. Today, many of them travel and tell the world about their experience. They also use their experience to inform the world about issues that are important to them. Today's Spotlight is on life after the San Jose mine crisis. Since the mining accident, organizations all over the world have invited many of the miners to visit and speak at events. In February 2011, 13 of the miners went to an event in the state of Florida in the United States. The event raised money for the United Mine Workers of America Miners Aid Fund. At the event, the miners talked about what they hoped to do in the future. Some planned to go back to mining. And one man talked about becoming an ambassador for mine safety. Many of the miners have spoken at these kinds of events. But two miners in particular are using their frightening experience to do good. Because of the crisis, Jose Enriquez and Mario Sepulveda are traveling the world. And they are telling people about what is most important to them. Jose Enriquez is a Christian. While trapped in the mine, he talked about his faith with the other miners. As a result, Enriquez became known as the pastor or religious leader of the group. He led the men in prayer and told them about God. Many of the miners say his faith helped them think positively while they waited to be rescued. Enriquez told the news website This is Gloucestershire. 
Our experience shows that no matter how bad things seem, there is always hope. We never lost faith during the days we were trapped. It was a terrible situation to be in. We were frightened, but even with everything that happened, we put our trust in God. We knew He had the power to save us. Enriquez continues to tell people about God. He always tells about how he believes in a God who answers prayer. He talks about the 22 miners that decided to follow Jesus as their Lord while they were in the mine. He believes this story of crisis is a message of hope. He told This is Gloucestershire. Since we were rescued, it has been my purpose in life to tell people my story. I believe God had a design for our accident to help spread a message of hope. Our experience shows that there is always hope, no matter how bad things seem. Another way Enriquez tells his story is by going on speaking tours. He travels to one area of the world and speaks at many places in a short period of time. In January and February 2011, Enriquez traveled around the United Kingdom. He visited more than 14 places in England and Ireland. He called this tour the 34th Man Tour. Mike Judge works for the Christian Institute in the United Kingdom. In a short film, he asked Enriquez about the name of the tour. There were only 33 men trapped in the mine. So Judge asked Enriquez, who is the 34th man? Enriquez answered, He is the one we are talking about. He is the friend who is always near us. You cannot see him but you can feel He is present in your heart. We believe in a power that is not seen. It cannot be touched, but it can be felt in the heart. That is our God, the Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And He has given us the sure faith that He is real, that He is a true God, and that He does answer prayer. Mario Sepulveda is another rescued miner using the crisis for good. Like Enriquez, he travels on speaking tours but he speaks about the importance of working together to help people recover from crisis. Sepulveda saw how people from around the world came together to save the trapped miners. He believes this unity, or oneness, was important to the recovery. So he started a not-for-profit organization called Miner's Miracle. He hopes that Miner's Miracle will help him spread a message of international unity. On February 27, 2010, 
about five months before the mine accident, an earthquake destroyed many areas of Chile. The government worked hard to assist the families who no longer had homes. But Sepulveda says that even with this help, many earthquake victims still do not have basic shelter. Through Miner's Miracle, Sepulveda is raising money to build new homes for the earthquake victims in Chile. He hopes to build 200 houses by June 2011. Sepulveda's goal grew even bigger in March of 2011. This is when a major earthquake and tsunami destroyed many areas of Japan. He believes international unity helps countries recover from crisis. So he decided Miner's Miracle would also help raise money for Japan. On the Miner's Miracle website, he stated, I am strongly affected by the suffering and damage caused by the earthquake and tsunami. I feel sympathy for the victims of this terrible crisis and to Japan. I understand what they must be going through and my heart is sad for them. I feel as if I am still trapped in that mine. I feel that I must make efforts to help Japan in this struggle. I not only wish to build homes in Chile, but I also wish to bring aid to Japan in the spirit of international unity. The mine collapse in San Jose was a terrible crisis. It changed the lives of 33 men forever. Each of them was given a second chance. And many of the miners, like Jose Enriquez and Mario Sepulveda, are using that second chance to bring hope out of crisis. The writer of this program was Courtney Scott. The producer was Ryan Gertzma. The voices you heard were from the United States. All quotes were adapted and voiced by Spotlight. You can find this program and many others on our website, www.radioenglish.net. This program is called Life After Crisis. We hope you can join us again for the next Spotlight program. Goodbye.